Hey, everyone, before we start the show, I want to tell you about a special episode of LeVar Burton Reads that's coming out this week. In his podcast, LeVar Burton, whom you may know from Reading Rainbow or Star Trek or guesting on this very program, encourages listeners to lose themselves in a great story. Each episode features LeVar reading a hand-picked piece of short fiction. In the final episode of season two, LeVar reads the story Child Finder by Octavia Butler, a hugely influential science fiction writer. In fact, Ava DuVernay is currently adapting one of Octavia's novels for TV. This episode is an incredibly personal and meaningful moment for LeVar, who has championed Octavia's work for a long time. Be sure to listen to the Season 2 finale of LeVar Burton Reads on Stitcher or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Welcome! Welcome, children of the Earth. Everyone born on Earth, I welcome you. I know, I know, I know. What about extraterrestrial travelers? You really want to get into this? I've been trying to welcome these sons of bitches all my life. Where are they? You know, the old idea goes that a lot of people hold this theory. If there were life on other planets, they would have made themselves known to us by now. And I used to think, you don't know anything about interstellar travel. What do you know about it? Of course, I'm discounting the people that say that they have had contact with aliens. They're fucking nuts. I believe in aliens. Do not believe those people. Just like in the movie Independence Day, a movie that is all about Earth being attacked by aliens as they recruit volunteers to get in planes to fight the aliens, including the president of the United States. One of the people, Randy Quaid, is a crop dusting farmer, whatever. Crop dusting farmer. That's how he (laughs) farms. He uses a crop duster, dumps the seeds, gets back in the plane, dumps the water, has a big rake tied to the plane. Anyway, so there's this scene where they're getting ready for battle. And then Randy Quaid, who's been talking about having been visited by aliens for years and everyone thinks he's a cuckoo. He says something about the aliens visiting him. Everyone still acts like he's nuts. They, the aliens are here. But for some reason, this guy's like, oh, whatever, cuckoo brains. Why why is he still crazy? So, my point is, aliens, what are you waiting for? Because here's what I think. They can hear this. I think that aliens listen to my podcast. I bet some of them have rated it on Apple Podcasts, which you should do too. It helps helps boost us in the ratings and help people find the show. I think aliens are laughing at us from a distance. And I yes, I think they're singing the song from a distance. Which one time I went to a funeral and the bereaved family wanted their friend to sing from a distance in the church. The church wouldn't allow it because it was a secular song. This is a long time ago, folks. The church is so progressive now. And so instead, they had her sing it at the sort of reception afterwards, which was in this restaurant. She just sang it a cappella. And after it was over, everyone clapped. And then the bereaved person stood up and made like a brief speech. And I turned to a friend of mine and said, people are going to clap after this because they just clapped before. And that's exactly what happened. (laughs) People started to clap and then they realized this is not a clapping occasion. (laughs) And they stopped. Aliens, 
Stop singing that goddamn song and show yourselves. If this gets it done, I'm a hero. Unless they incinerate the planet Earth. In which case, fuck all y'all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a program where I invite a special guest to join me in a free-form conversation inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then I invite some improviser pals onto the show to join me in a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes, oftentimes employing details gleaned from the conversation with the aforementioned special guest. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a surprise guest here today. And here's what's great. This is like a locked door murder mystery. The guest is someone in this room. This gentleman has been on the show many times as an improviser, but he has never been our guest before. But guess what? He's got a television program that is premiering tomorrow. Wow. Please welcome one of the stars of The Last OG, premiering April 3rd on a network. TBS. TBS, the Turner Broadcasting System. Mm Mm-hmm. Welcome back to the show, Ryan Gall. Hi, Paul. Ryan. I'm, I'm shocked I did not see that coming. It was I fun would, to keep it from you. Can I just can I just be one of the improvisers? Nope. It's too late. Okay. The die has been cast. Okay. I'm on board now. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited that you're on this show. I'm really excited. And I want to help you promote it. That's, That's really all. sweet of you. I'm a sweet guy. You are a sweet man. I'll, I'll melt in the rain. Some made of sugar. I was scared when I first met you that you would not be sweet. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. I because you have you have a mustache a lot of the times. A lot of the times. Uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> because of the you mustache. associate that with sinister people. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it absolutely is a sign of of evil. <laughs> Do you still believe that even after knowing me? No. No. In but, fact, most but, people today that I meet with a mustache are not evil at all. Right? I think statistically, I'm wrong. But somewhere in my heart, it's real. I think it's been reclaimed. Yeah. Like furniture. Okay. Where you can paint it whatever color you want. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're, you're right. It, it, it's also, there's a trend of having mustaches on people that shouldn't have mustaches. That's also right true. Now, you know, which yes. I'm sure bothers you. It, look, people can do what they want. Do you really believe that? I really do believe that, Ryan. I really do believe that. I believe that we're at a, a great time where people don't have to all look the same. They can they can do whatever they want stylistically, and I think that's to the better. But mustache? Uh, look. On a cool-looking guy? Uh, like look. a guy who was wearing... I mean, cut this part out. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. Obviously, these mean, assholes. Oh, my God. What should they be doing, doing this? You can have a mustache and a monocle. It should like be. A pipe. Oh, who's doing a monocle? No, they're like, yeah, I mean, there's people that do this. Are you talking about steampunk people? Yeah, of course I'm talking about <laughs> steampunk people. What are you talking about? I'm always- I'm talking about what you're talking about. Steampunk people. Steampunk people. SPPs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As we learned about in the Church of Scientology. Yes. Beware Wait. of SPPs. <laughs> oh, my God. Ugh. Ryan, I have yeah. a question for you. I'm ready. This comes to us from our previous episode's guest. Okay. And that question is... What do you want someone to whisper in your ear? Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. It could be anything. And you can interpret this question however you wish. Um, okay. You know what? I'll just go real simple. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I guess this is hard. I've sat here and watched people answer these questions, and I always think in my mind I have a better answer than they give. And now, is that true? I mean, always. I'm always like, Jesus. Ugh. What? Boring. How's Paul going to spin this into something fun? But I always do. You always right? do. I always do. So I trust that you'll do that with this as well. But you don't have to make it hard for me, though. No, 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 no. I'm going to be, uh, I'm not going to be funny. I'm just. <laughs> I'm going to let you take care of that. I would want, 
I think I want somebody to whisper in to my ear very softly uh, the truth about afterlife. <laughs> Whether there is an afterlife. Right. And who's there. Let me... I know that's a big part. That's, that's a big add-on. You. That's a big add-on. And who's there? Yeah. I mean, not a full list, but it, but a good size list of people I know. Sure. Maybe my grandmother. <laughs> maybe my maybe. grandfather. Now, my, at the time that the whisper happens, which I right. don't know if that is part of the question, but are my parents there? Yeah, you know. I you, want to know. I, I think you can interpret this. Uh, you, you can you can determine when you want this whisper to happen. But now I have to ask. Now. <laughs> right now. In, in this. So if that's what they're whispering. Uh-huh. Do you know for a fact that what they're saying is true? I mean, in my mind, it, nobody's going to whisper with it. <laughs> A lot. I mean, I guess they could lie. They absolutely could. I would want it to be true. So Otherwise, you, it's a real waste of this whisper. So, so you're saying if someone does, if, if someone were to whisper something in your ear, you would want it to be, you would need it the to truth, be the truth. The truth about afterlife. Yeah, I would need it. If somebody tries to, I mean, there's got to be, you've really thrown a wrench in my whisper. Well, what's a, what's a thing that somebody could whisper in your ear that you would, you would not know if it were true, but you would be okay with the ambiguity? Um, oh. Okay. Let me um, hold, oh, on, here, hold on. I got it. You're, uh, <laughs> here, I'll do it. Okay. For you. <laughs> okay. okay. Imagine, and I'll All set right. up the situation. I'll si- turn my situation. head. So even I can have headphones on, but I'll pretend that you're whispering in my ear. It's early morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, is this would, part of it? Yeah. This is our, this isn't what I'm whispering. Oh, but this I'm is, setting you're up. setting this up. This is a, tell, the tell stage me when, directions. Tell me when I should turn my head. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, it's early morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, no one's awake on the farm. <laughs> and where are we? Just waking up. You're on the farm. Oh, okay. Uh, and let's say a an apple farm in New Hampshire. And you are just starting to open your eyes. And your uh, your wife is sleeping next to you. The wife I have in life. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Or who, whoever's, yeah, whoever is, uh, if it's a woman. Can we woman, get this part out? Yeah. If it's a woman listening right now, it could be her husband or wife. <laughs> it is. It's her loved I'm one. I'm going to say, it's someone <laughs> listening right now. Yeah. They better be listening right now. So uh, <laughs> this is all clear, and I think people will get it. Um, but this is, so now turn your head. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I love you. Oh. That's always welcome. That was real for you. <laughs> that, what do you mean? Here's the side. I wasn't finished. No, okay. So, I love you. You're worth everything. You're worth mm-hmm. everything. <laughs> I love you. You're worth everything. That's beautiful. Now, wait, that's, in, that's the ambiguous one? Yeah. That's the one that I wouldn't need to know if it's true. So, I would just be like, <laughs> I could have a great day if somebody woke me up that way. What are your, what were your afterlife beliefs when you were a child and have they changed as an adult? I was a staunch believer in heaven mm-hmm. and hell. Were, were you raised with religion? Uh, Catholicism. As was I. Yeah. yeah. So um, I remember in third grade going to CCD. Did you go to CCD? I did not because uh, I went to Catholic school. Okay. So that oh, was okay. all taken you, care of. You, CCD was every day. Yeah. So I, every Tuesday, had to go to Mrs. Curley's house. Uh, <laughs> and Mrs. Curley, this is odd because I think she may have been some sort of, I think she may have been undead. Because when I was young, I remember her as being the oldest person in the world. Right. And still, like, three years ago, I saw her in church, and I was like, how are you? I mean, this is rude, but how are you alive? How, and you don't look different at all. Do you know who else is like that? Carol Channing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe Mrs. Curley is Carol Channing. Uh, huh. Does she? Does, she... <laughs> yeah. She does look and sound just like her. <laughs> but this is the best. This is the best. Thing. Christ died for your sins. <laughs> She, they nailed him to a cross. You're not far off. You're not far off. And she told me, this is the truth, and this really solidified my fear of God. Mm-hmm. 
she told me every time somebody took the Lord's name in vain, that if you listened closely, you could hear Jesus scream. Oh, wow! <laughs> scream! Yeah. And by the way, <laughs> guess what third grader tried to listen every time I heard somebody go like, ah, Jesus. I'd be like, huh? Huh? Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> I mean. Were there times where you thought you could hear it? No, I never heard it. I never, I never honestly did. I think there were times where I was like, I think I did. But if I'm honest with myself, I never well, heard Jesus no, no, I I know that you never heard Jesus scream. <laughs> no, I'll be I'm asking, did you think you did? <laughs> Yeah, I probably did. Scream, not even, no, not, not even like, like cry. No, scream, 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 scream. And she also told us if you if this we took the Lord's name in vain, uh, you buy you literally buy yourself time burning in hell every time you do. You earn points. This is, I was in third grade. Yeah, you like it's like a Ralph's card yeah. where you like earn points towards gas, literally. <laughs> How crazy is that? That's really but the 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 stuff that Ugh. people say to kids in the name of religion and I I only have Catholicism to base it on. I'm sure I'm sure Judaism has its fair share of horror stories that's like should I be hearing this? Right. I'm um, sure. But the just the concept of hell yeah to teach a child that is demented. It's insane. <laughs> To think that you, if you don't act a certain way it, through the lens of a organized religion, yeah. you're going to burn in hell forever. Yeah. And to try to teach a kid what for, even the concept of forever is already like, oh my God. <laughs> and then the pain of burning and probably the worst pain at that point in my life I had felt was like a sunburn. So <laughs> to think about, I mean, it was. Crazy. Imagine that times two. Yeah. I was like, what if it was even worse? <laughs> Did you grow up with the idea of limbo? He, uh, is that the same as purgatory? It's different. Okay. Limbo is where the unbaptized babies go. Oh, that's where my children will go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Much but as adults, I don't know parents. what happens. To, I, I think adults who are unbaptized go to hell. Oh, okay. If you're a baby and you're not yeah, baptized like, and you die, me. you go to limbo. Okay. Forever? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Or can you go to limbo and then be baptized there? They're like, okay, get in line. I don't, I think you're just trapped there. Although they, they recent, they only, Ryan, they only recently did away with that concept. Well, why would Like I want to say in the last 10 years. Okay. They're like, okay, limbo's not real. I That's love it. So there was a meeting. Yeah. And somebody was like, hey, on the dock, it was, do we keep limbo yeah. or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we keep believing in this thing? We got to keep purgatory. <laughs> got to keep it. Purgatory, I did not realize, and I may have talked about it on the show before, till I was an adult and I wasn't religious anymore, that purgatory was hell for a short amount of time. What? Yeah. It's like you go to purgatory. I thought it was like a waiting room. Yeah. I thought it was like it's in not. between four year. You between. you pay for your sins. Oh. You're tortured and shit. It's like it's like a, a mini version of hell. So it's like this is what you could have gotten. Yeah, this would have been this would have gone on forever. But all you did was you masturbated, oh uh you didn't go to church on Christmas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like all the dumb <laughs> Oh my God. The dumb sins <sighs> that earns you purgatory. So it's like torture for a short amount of time. And then you get to go to heaven. I stole a wad of $50 bills off Beecher Cotton's dad's nightstand when I was in kindergarten. Purgatory. <sighs> and I handed them out the next day to everybody in school. <laughs> what? Yeah, I had to collect them and get them back. I did not get them all back. And then I had to go back to him and tell him, sorry for stealing a wad okay. of $50 bills. No what? one ever asked why does he have a it's wad of my $50. first that's, question. That's no, nobody. What doing, did he do for a living? He was a quote unquote contractor. Oh dear. Yeah. Okay. Now I understand. And so he had a wad of fifty one dollar bills. Fifty. Yeah. Fifty dollar bill. No fifty dollar bills. Not $51. not fifty one dollar bills, no. which aren't in circulation anymore. No. No. <laughs> $51.75 bills. No, they were $50 bills. They were no joke. I remember giving one to Oh, wait, Nathan I'm sorry. Arnold. He had a wad of $50, $50 bills? Why bill. did I assume? Okay. I know. It got, and it, I, here's why I assumed it was $1 bills for some reason. Because you were handing them out to your little friends. No. That's, that's what's even more insane. That's bold. Yeah. So, so 
Did your did your little friend witness you take it? Was it both of your idea? No, he, nobody knew I took it. Nobody knew. And so the next day, you're yeah, like, we just hey, used everybody. To, yeah, I, I mean, be, his name was Beecher Cotton. His his dad was Jack Cotton, and he. I remember we just would roam his house, just like his parents were never there. And he'd be like, oh, I'm going to eat. And I'll be like, oh, I'll be upstairs. And we'll just like <laughs> run around and you like pretended find that you things. guys were yeah. housemates. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, then we'd meet back up. What'd you find? Nothing. Throwing stars. Cool. Throw them. Throwing stars. Yeah. We found those ones too. And, but I did, I remember seeing, uh, I, I also stole cigarettes from him once and tried to smoke them by a tree and almost died and <laughs> never have smoked since. Uh, that was also in kindergarten. Kindergarten was a rough year. <laughs> kindergarten. kindergarten. I got it out of the way early. Holy All my shit. crime out of the way early. And then from that point on, I just listened for Jesus's scream. That's right. <laughs> And the occasional bar fight where mm -hmm. your nose got punched yeah, off. That did. Yeah. <laughs> occasionally <laughs> flapping in the wind. <laughs> oh, Ryan Gall, talk to me about uh, The Last OG. The Last OG premieres tomorrow. That's right. I believe at 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I believe it might be Check your local listings. Yeah. Because of mountain time. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever those people are. What but, What is the show about? What do you play on the show? Uh, the Lasso G is, it's Tracy Morgan mm -hmm. and Tiffany Haddish. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've heard of her. Yeah. No, I know she is. She's famous. Yeah. Okay. Why do you? I don't know. Listen, <laughs> this is the story. <laughs> it's a uh, story of Tracy's uh, character has gone away to prison for 15 years. And when he gets out, he's reentering Brooklyn. As it, But Brooklyn has changed along with his his girlfriend, Shay. Mm -hmm. Uh, who is played by Tiffany Haddish, is now married to me and this unassuming white man. And uh, I'm raising his two children. Mm. So it's about this, you know, him kind of not only uh, becoming reacquainted with a new Brooklyn, but trying to gather his life and, and adjust to me being part of it. I bet it's not going to be an easy adjustment. You know what? No, it gets wrapped up in 10 minutes and then it moves on. Really? Yeah, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. Huh. Well, I'm yeah. curious to see what the series is going to be. It's only a 10-minute <laughs> This minute is wrapped short. up in the... T oh, that's it. It's a 10-minute long miniseries. Is it... Is this good promotion? Can you binge them? Is it like, can you watch all 10 minutes in a row? Mm -hmm. Or is it... Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, I guess... It's I, new I, programming from TBS, and it's going to kill. It's interesting. That's interesting. It's I, I had a different idea in my mind. I thought it was like a half-hour show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, actually, it is. Hey, but it's <laughs> great. It's, it's a really... I'm really proud of it. It's not just a comedy. It's got a huge amount of heart, and I think people are really going to really going to like it. Give it a chance. I'm looking forward to it. I really enjoyed your behind the scenes videos that you post on Instagram oh, yes. of the cast of the show not being interested in yeah. you at all. That that bit started early <laughs> and people attached themselves to it. <laughs> people pretending they didn't know who I was. was like, people attached themselves. To <laughs> yeah, to that bit. <laughs> it's a fun bit. It was a great bit. One Did of my best. Was it a bit that started to hurt your feelings after a while? After a while, I was like, <laughs> I didn't say we were going to do the bit this time. <laughs> and they were like, what bit? And I said, what? Wait a second. And they'd said, seriously, who are you? And I said, forget it. Why did I post this? <laughs> Well, Ryan Gall, yes. thank you for being my special surprise guest. Thank Last you for OG. letting me be your surprise of, guest. Of course, honey. I of love course. you for that. I love you. The Last OG premieres tomorrow night. Check your local listings if you live on a mountain. <laughs> We're going to take a break. When we return, we will meet our improvisers. Stay alive no matter what occurs. I will find you. Lisa, the mattress company that gives a good goddamn. That's right. Lisa Mattresses, driven by the mission to provide a better place to sleep for everybody. Lisa is an innovative, direct-to-consumer online mattress brand that is also socially conscious, like I was talking about in my song. Here's what they do. For every 10 mattresses Lisa sells, they donate one to a shelter through their 110 program. That's right. Lisa invented the 110 program. If you hear of other people using it, they're ripping Lisa off. 
Lisa also plants one tree for every mattress sold. Come on. Who else is doing that? Uh, don't give me examples. I don't want to hear it. And Lisa donates 1% of each employee's time to volunteer for local causes. That means if people work at Lisa, they know this is part of the deal and they're okay with it. They're not prisoners that we've put to work. Not to mention, with a patented universal adaptive feel, let's talk about the mattresses. Lisa is designed for all types of sleepers and features three premium foam layers, including, and this is, where do you get a lot of these foam layers? You're, you're not going to believe some of these are foam. They're all foam. Two-inch Avena foam top layer for cooling and breathability. Yeah, foam. Two-inch memory foam middle layer, foam is in the name, for body contouring and pressure relief. Now, this means it contours to your body, not that it will contour your body. You're not going to wake up with a different body, much as we'd all like to. Am I right, girls? And a six-inch dense core support foam. Foam again. Three times the foam. For durability and structure, which works for sleepers of all sizes. Big, little, fat, not fat. The four types of sleepers. And now Lisa is continuing to expand its offerings to include the Lisa pillow, Lisa blanket, Lisa foundation, and Lisa frame. They didn't have to do that. They're making a whole bed for you. No wonder Lisa's a Forbes top 20 startups to watch. You fool. <laughs> Why were you wondering? There's no wonder. Try a Lisa mattress in your own home for 100 nights risk Free. It is available in the United States, in the United Kingdom, a Canada, a Germany, online, and with free shipping. This 100% American-made mattress, mattress ships compressed in a box right to your door. Or try it at the Lisa Dream Gallery in Soho, New York City, and Virginia Beach. Shout out to Todd Cooper and over 80 West Elm stores nationwide. Get $125 off and a free pillow when you go to leesa.com slash PFT. I love you. Oh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to meet our friends from the land of make pretense. Seated. Kitty corner for me. Meow. Welcome back to the show, Ronnie Adrian. Hello, everyone. Ro <laughs> Ronnie, how have you been since I last saw you? Um, not bad. Not bad. Um, if ever, <laughs> I will say this: the last time I did this show, when I listened to it again, I realized I was. I thought I was talking very fast. Um, I didn't get any feedback on that from anybody, but I just feel like it for myself. So prepare for me to slow down. Wait, so e even though no one else nope, said no one you were no talking too it. fast, no one said it. Everyone, everyone else that I asked was like, "No, that's perfectly fine." But I don't, I don't, I don't buy it. You rely on your internal monitor mm -hmm. of your talking speed. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, my mother, the only feedback I would ever get after school shows was, "You talk too fast." I, I mean, I think I was always like when I would grow up or like when I was in school and like we had to read in class mm -hmm. I would always be excited to read because I'd be like I'm gonna show everybody how fast I can read while also being <laughs> accurate <laughs> like that was a cool thing right. <laughs> now I think I'm like that's not cool but I remember being like oh it's about to be my turn I'm about to kill this paragraph <laughs> were you thinking about the micro machines guy what <laughs> <laughs> that's an old reference you're a young man I don't expect you to know there was a man called John Moshida mm -hmm. he had set the record for fastest talking Presumably fastest talking where you can still make out what the words are. Uh -huh. And he uh, he was on several talk shows and things doing his fast talking. And then he famously did commercials for these toy cars called Micro Machines, uh -huh. which were little itty bitty toy cars. I don't know what fast talking had to do with them, but he became known as the Micro Machines guy. Got it. Yeah. Now, when you were a child, were you raised with religion? Uh, yes. Yes, I, I was. Um, I... Well, I, I never myself joined the church, mm -hmm. um, but my, I went to my grandma's church, which was uh, uh, Methodist. Uh -huh. And then we would also go to like a Baptist church. Oh. 
Just to mix it up a little bit. Uh, yeah. Like, well, that's my grandma's church. And then when I go with my mom, maybe we go there. Maybe we go to somewhere else. My mom I usually see. go to churches that were closer to where she lived. Mm-hmm. So like, um, so we go to a Baptist church or we've been to a lot of churches and I always judge the churches by like how bad, the like how good the choir is. Right. And you know, like most of the time it's like, oh, okay, these are pretty good choirs. It's okay. Mm-hmm. But then there was one church we went to. I can't remember the name of it, but ooh, that choir was, it was a type, the energy was there like it was good. Yeah. But I'm thinking, I'm looking around like everyone knows this is bad, right? <laughs> Like this is not. Uh, this is this is bad. Like because church is boring, and anything to liven it up. And if even that is failing you, that's uh, that's a tough hour. I mean, this is true. I mean, but I would also say that I think uh, church is um, very fun and entertaining. Um, if you're listening, mom, that's that's what I feel. <laughs> that's exactly what I think about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, church is where it's at. I wish I was in one church right is now. Where it's at. <laughs> I wish I was in one right now. When is? Can I ask you? When's the last time you were in church? Um, the last time I went home, which was like um, the end of last October. Mm-hmm. I mean, because yeah, I just be out here. I just haven't found the right one yet. Still you looking. Know, still looking. Still looking. Still looking. Yes. So I'm still doing my Yelp reviews, getting you know, doing that kind of stuff, building it up. Right. Because I don't want to step foot into any church. You know what I mean? Of like, course so not. That's what it is. You don't get one of those bad choirs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't want to go to church to get a bad choir. Ronnie, do you want me to put a mom block on this episode? No, uh, no, uh, no, no. Because it, no, it's a thing we can do no, so no, that moms can't no, hear. I understand. I just. I honestly, I don't think she will listen. But if she did, I just want—I want to have the nope, opportunity because I, I wanted her to see that okay. I'm doing stuff. Oh, so, I got you. Okay, okay so. all right. So good luck in your church search. Yeah, still looking. Have you? Will you come on my show, Church Search? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll be the first guest. I, I'll help you produce it. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Ronnie, I'm going to look away from you to look across the table at this person seated right next to me. <laughs> She put a little sassafras into a a (laughs) lean on the table. Just a little elbow lean. Welcome back, Stephanie Courtney. I'm so happy to be here. Stephanie, I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. Ages and ages. How old are your kids now? 40? One kid, and he's 40. Um, No, he's (laughs) six now, and he's in kindergarten. Oh, boy. I know. It's crazy. Are they making him do that forced sharing? (laughs) God. Um, You know, that's what I keep thinking. You know, you look around and... I mean, not that this sounds like a bit, but I just, you know, you watch TV, you watch politicians these days and you're like, we learn, we we teach our kids things in kindergarten, basic human kindness and interaction that are like the only reason for kindergarten. And when does that go away? (laughs) Like when does sharing and politeness and wait your turn and look out for each other? Like, are you saying everything you needed to know you learned in kindergarten? (laughs) Yeah, I wrote a book. I can't wait to (laughs) find a publisher and really make it happen. Oh, I have some terrible What do you mean? No, I've made terrible financial decisions. I need this to work. I need this to work. It is weird. I think it's, I think when people become in control of themselves, where they no longer have somebody that's telling them what to do, um, I think you go one way or the other. Either you say, I understand why these sort of systems are in place. Yep. And how it f- helps us function as a society. Or you say, no one's not ever going to make me do anything ever again. That's for suckers, not me. That's right. Yeah. It's part, it's part of the not me generation. <laughs> God bless them. They're going to take us to a glorious new future. That's right. They were raised on Family Circus, <laughs> where there occasionally be a ghost in the house. Jeffy, your dead grandpa just drifted into the house. How about so many ghosts in the Family I Circus? Know. So many dotted line ghosts and things. <laughs> No, you're, Jeffy, you're conflating when the Billy path. goes somewhere. The path. Yes, that's not the same as the ghosts. That's... Sorry, I didn't pay more attention <laughs> to Family Circus. I should have paid more. Attention. Well, I am too, <laughs> Stephanie. Oh, I'll go. The fam- they had a dog named Barfy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, somehow the That's... author the author knew how we all felt. And like just ah. his hand like his hand took control and wrote Barfy. Right. Stephanie, were you raised with religion? I sure was Catholic, just like Okay. You and you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you go to Catholic school or did you go to CCD? No, no CCD and we had to sit in the desks at the Catholic school and get really sternly reminded. And be, but these desks were like carved into and there's sure. like gum and cigarettes. And the, you know what I mean? And they're like, you aren't sorry. like these children. You know, they they really reminded us that we were second class. That we you were, were seat fillers. Oh, uh, yeah. We, we come here on a Tuesday from 4 to 5.15. 
Wow. Now, who were the who were the were the teachers? Were they the teachers at the Catholic school? Who yes. Do the CCD. Sometimes it was a sister who taught at the <sighs> at the school, but my parents very very raised Catholic as well. Um, they had such terrible um, experiences at their Catholic school mm-hmm. that they said no. And then my dad taught at the high school, so they were like, "Look, whatever. It's that's it's a good public education. Just do it." Yeah. Yeah. But well, back in those days, of your parents when they were kids going to Catholic school, that's Ooh. when it was like Deadwood in those. Classrooms. My dad was South Bronx. My mom was Hell's Kitchen, and my mom is—I think she walked out of that whole thing damaged. She was a left. <laughs> she was a lefty, and uh-huh. now she's a righty. Right. And the most nervous, anxious, right-handed woman in the history of right-handed people. <laughs> That—it's so fucking crazy. This was a thing. Yes, it was. This was a thing where they you weren't allowed to be left-handed. No, sir. And it was like hitting. (sighs) Yeah. Hitting. They were hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my mom, I mean, and my mom's personal, I mean, home life wasn't awesome. And then go to school and it's like, (laughs) you're left. She's like, wait, I didn't even know this was another reason to like (laughs) abuse me. God. Um, Yeah, pretty crazy. How's she doing now? She's doing all right. Okay. She she lives here and she's doing all right. Yeah. Does she live here? Yeah, she does. They when did she here. move? When? Very recently. They live with my sister now. And um, yeah, my parents both live here. They want to be close to their grandchildren. They just do. And then I think the house was big and the, and the you know, the weather was, it was New York, so it was bad. Fuck that shit. Uh, <sighs> did you ever live in New York? I, uh, I lived in New York. Yeah, I grew up in Rockland County, New York. And then I uh, went to college in upstate New York and then lived in New York City for six years. And Ronnie, you spent some time in New York as well. Uh, yes, I spent. A, I was there for a summer. You were there for the food. I was the, as we've established <laughs> yeah, previously. You know me. Yeah, I went to New York for the food and was rice like rice and right, beans. I, I got it. Rice and beans. <laughs> exactly. I was there. Rice and beans. Um, and then after I had my fill of rice and beans every meal, I was like, you know what? It's time to move on. <laughs> You've seen every it. Meal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, New York's a tough food town because it's like, well, what am I going to eat besides rice and beans? I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, it's really like you would think that with so many cultures there, they would have more like good options. Absolutely. Nah. Rice Absolutely. And beans, that's, where's that? And Ryan, you well, you shot the the last OG there. Yeah, but that wasn't my first experience in New York. No. Oh. Tell me about the first. The first experience was when I got a commercial agent there and I lived in Boston and I would get up at 4.30 in the morning and go down to a Wendy's commercial audition, say, <laughs> and then the travel audition. all the way back oh my God. for a commercial audition because do you know why? It was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> and I booked so many things. Ask me for the number of things I booked. What's the number of us? Zero. <laughs> <things>. <laughs> How long did you do Never that? Never booked a thing. And I got like two callbacks. And one of them was in a snowstorm. It was amazing. I, I, yeah, it was the biggest waste of my life. And how, long, how long did you do that? I did it for a year. <laughs> and I spent so much money on oh trains. Shit. But you know what? It taught me a lesson. <laughs> Which is? Listen for Jesus screaming <laughs> on the trains. Because I was definitely helping him scream. Ha <laughs> ha! Ladies and gentlemen, we have to take another break. When we return, we will have procured a location for our improv, and then we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns. Hey, everybody. Knowledge is power. So let's talk about what we all know. We all know Hello from the Magic Tavern. It's an Earwolf podcast about Arnie, a man who fell through a dimensional portal behind a Burger King. He went to the magical land of Foon. It's a fun podcast, and yes, I've been on it, and I was great. Well, in a magical world like Foon, full of shape-shifting badgers and talking flowers, they don't play Dungeons and Dragons. They're, that's the kind of world they're living in, so why would they play that? They play offices and bosses. Do you get this? Dum-dums. Offices and bosses... Look, this is a thing they do on the show. This is a thing they've talked about on the show. Now they're actually doing a limited series. The guys from Hello from the Magic Tavern, they're doing a limited series called Offices and Bosses. It is back. Wait, it's back with a new batch of episodes? Wait, they've already done this before? Is this true? Ryan's telling me this is... Okay, so everyone kept this secret from me. Well, now you and I, both... (laughs) can listen to Offices and Bosses only on Stitcher Premium. You can check it out for free. Start a free one-month trial at stitcherpremium.com slash magic. 
and use the promo code SPOT. Don't use any other promo codes because this is a betrayal that I will never forgive. S-P-O-N-T. That's your promo code. Stitcherpremium.com slash magic. Use the code SPOT. And oh boy, oh boy, wait till everyone gets an earful from me about this. Oh boy. It's your lucky day. The, sh- the rest of the show is not just dead space. That's right. You're looking at your podcast counter and like, oh, I hope there's more. Well, there is. Ladies and gentlemen, we have procured a location for our improv from Earwolf's own ad ops specialist, Mindy. We tried to get one from our PSYOP specialist, Jakarta, but she called in sick to work today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to reveal that location provided by Adop Specialist Mindy. But first, just so as you know, in order to aid us with our storytelling, that's a phrase I've said a million times and I don't know that it's correct. In order to aid us with our story. To aid us in our storytelling. I don't don't have to say in order to. See, I'm always learning. To aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time. Let's say we need to travel into the past for any reason. Someone's having a flashback. We're learning how something came to be. Anytime we go into the past, we use this flashback sound effect. Now, can't stay in the past forever. So if we want to get back in time and go forward into the future, so we want to return from a flashback back to where we were or go even further into the future. Anytime we move forward in time, we use this flash forward sound effect. Now, this final sound (laughs) moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene. We want to find out what is happening at the exact same moment somewhere else. We use this meanwhile button. Past. Present. Future. Everyone gets it. And now it is time to reveal the location provided to us by Ad Op Specialist Mindy. And that location is... San Diego Airport. San Diego Airport. We take you now to San Diego Airport. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, your Delta representative. Um, We do have a list of delays that I need to tell you about. Oh, here we go. Uh. Flight 4162 to Orlando. Don't say it. Don't you don't you well, say why it. Why would they say it if it wasn't he's going on time? Oh. Weird. <sighs> why what's the point of he that? He said he's gonna list delays. Yes. That's the end of the list. <laughs> Please let us know if we can help you. We do have uh no upgrades available if you're interested. Please um enjoy your flight today and and uh, a fond farewell from San Diego. What? <laughs> just, just useless information. You know, we won these tickets to go to Orlando. It means so much to me. And then this confusing message for starting off on such a bad foot. Well, it means a lot to me too, Chuck. We didn't have a honeymoon. We didn't ever celebrate Christmas. We never had the money. Not, not together or individually. But this is it. This, got, this has to make me happy. This has to fix everything. Chuck, I feel like you're putting a lot on this trip. I am. I am. So you recognize that you're doing that. I, do. I can self-diagnose, Pat. <laughs> I just know that if I'm not happy and fully fulfilled at the end of this trip, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't. Chuck, know. what are you saying? No. Oh, I thought that was out loud. It was totally out loud. What I'm saying is I I haven't been working at Build-A-Bear. Chuck! No, I, I had a small inheritance I've been living off of, and I was hoping that Disneyland would motivate me to... Oh, crap. I'm just realizing we're going to Disney World. 
I need a moment. Chuck, this is a lot for me to process. First of all, if you were lying about having a job, why did you pick Build-A-Bear? Well, I'm there all the time. And I figured if you walked past, you'd see me. So you've just been... And have you picked out your beer? <laughs> is there a time limit? Because uh, no, I'm, I'm window curious. shopping. I just wanted to make sure you picked one out. And if you needed any assistance, that's why I came out for. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. I need more. I need more uh, stuffing for my bear. Okay. Hold on. Let me get the stuffing bag. Okay. How stretchy is this? Uh, is the is the is this bear skin? Level four. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, do we have a level five? If you need it. Okay. Well, do we? Can I get a level five? But uh, and, uh, like, but like complimentary. Hmm. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes. Um, One I, second on the level five. I'm th okay. contemplating. The lady. Uh, the lady said it's time to put the heart in my pair. Oh. I don't want that. Oh my god. Leave that out. But what? If your heart doesn't exist in the bear, then the bear. Then the bear could turn. I'll take my chances. I'll take his heart if you don't want it. Complimentary, of course, because obviously you but don't then, want the, it's his heart. So I didn't get two hearts. Trying to wrap my head around this, that would make one bear with no hearts, and your bear would have two hearts. And that's the weather. And in safety news today, if you have a Build-A-Bear that's a level four or higher, you are being urged to return that bear to the store immediately. It has been found to combust. <laughs> One level, two hearts could be confusing. I'm sorry, I have to talk to my manager about, about this. You've just been hanging out at Build-A-Bear for hours. I watch the conversations, and that way when I come back and I uh, tell you about work, it's true. I have lied to you the least amount that I possibly could, Pat. Well, I certainly appreciate that. <sighs> Build-A-Bear, it is a great place to people watch. Hey, excuse me, you two. <laughs> yes? Um, did they let you guys keep your bags when you came through? Well, no, we... We were, we were asked to surrender them because the, uh, the flight. What would you mean through security? Or yeah, through, yeah, like. Oh, we brought them through security. Yes. I mean, my oh. satchel, I got to keep. Okay. Okay. All right. Why? What happened? Did uh, they take your bag at security? Well, yeah. Uh, give me the bag. <laughs> no, I need it for. I got my clothes in here. Uh -huh. I'm TSA. Give me the bag. No. Are you gonna fight with me? He has a glue gun. No, take take the bag. Are you taking other people's bag or just I'm, mine? I'm sorry, the TSA guy has a glue gun? The TSA <laughs> guy has a glue gun, and so does the TSA girl that you're talking to. And you're, are you allowed to shoot people with glue guns? No, but we can glue your mouth shut. Uh, yeah. I, I retract my question. Please, give me, give don't, me don't do that. Please don't glue my mouth shut. I, I, I was, I was, I was raised gonna, Catholic. I'm <laughs> not going to glue your mouth shut yet. Give me the bag. Well, I've heard your confession, and you are hereby ordered to give three Hail Marys to our fathers, and I'm going to quiz you on the Stations of the Cross. In station number five, what happens in the lower left corner of the picture? <laughs> what? No. I, uh, <laughs> Do you know what limbo is? Would you like to be surrounded by a bunch of ghost babies? Uh, I, want, I, I want to play with my friends. I mean, what, we're just here forever? This weird empty space? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, that's if we're at where you're saying we're at. But well, I mean, I, look, I don't know about you, but uh, I made it to about three months old, and uh, here I am. <laughs> well, lucky you. And that's the big joke, isn't it? We all look like adorable little babies. Yeah, we're but cute. We've aged. Well, mentally. <laughs> mentally. 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 Physically, no. I still feel very weak. I'm a little fat baby. <sighs> Hey, easy on yourself. No, I mean, okay. I'm a cute. Oh, look at my cheeks. No, they're very cute. I bet Thank you, you. Yeah, I bet you would have worked a lot. You know what's weird? Mm -hmm. That we're all cute to each other. <laughs> it's like we've we've aged emotionally. Yeah. To where we look at each other like, oh, that's a we, cute baby. Cute. But I'm a cute baby. You know what yeah. I mean? Babies are cute. 
All babies, babies are cute. Well, All babies nature are cute. designed it that way. But some are cute. You're a very cute baby. Thank you. You have good hair for a baby. Thank you. It's funny because it's like uh, it's it's uh, it's all crazy. It's like uh, pretty dark. It's you know, curly. It's tousled. Do you mean tousled? I said that. <laughs> Guys, did you see this poster on the wall? They're having a limbo baby beauty contest. I oh thought they were God. at a limbo contest. <laughs> we- That's the beauty limbo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, another announcement from the Delta desk. Sorry for all these announcements. I know sometimes it's hard to just take in so much information, and we at Delta don't. We don't want you to get confused. We'll, we'll help you in a minute. We just got to listen to this announcement. Oh. Um, if you are, um, if anybody is missing a bag, or oh. Oh. if we do, uh, I nobody's. Turn one in yet. Was that a what? sentence? Huh? Like uh, there's no barely. periods at the end. Like Again, can... if you need to come up to the desk to see um, if my your desk. Fl- flight is on, on time, just feel free to come up and see me at my desk. Um, <laughs> my desk is right over here. If you guys can't meant, like, you know, the counter, but he means he personal means desk. desk. I bet it is literally covered with tiny stuffed animals. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. So... TSA threatened to glue your mouth shut. Yes. And then they confiscated your bag? Yes. Did they give you a reason why? No. I didn't think it. I guess now that I realize everyone has their bags and their mouths intact, I guess it was weird. I should have. I don't know, man. There's been lot in error. I just can't. I don't want to question anything. Do you want us to go to the desk with you? I mean, our flight is not right away. Um, honestly, I would really love that. All right. Well, okay. let's, let's, let's go over to that desk. Chuck, it's just like you said. It's covered with stuffed animals. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 Excuse do, us. Da, da, da. Excuse us. I'm I'm sorry. Can I just finish up my song? <laughs> Hold on one second. And that's when everything happened. Okay. Okay. Hi. Welcome to the Delta Desk, Marsha. How can I help you? Hey, Marsha. Um, quick, quick. Oh, Hi. I, thought, I thought it was a man Hi. the whole time. Hi. Um, Excuse me, sir. I'm sorry. Nothing. I was just talking to my husband. Oh. Hey. Um. So I got my bag taken earlier. Oh my god! <laughs> By TSA. Oh, um, but what did you think? Yeah, I th- I I thought it might have been a some sort of common criminal. Mm. Oh. And I didn't. And to think, and you guys can probably relate to think that there's common criminals racing around in the airport is a terrifying thought. It's not great. Yeah, not at true. all. I mean, but you know what? A, what, what a criminal is worse. One What's, that can criminalize and not be penalized for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, yeah. That's true. Here, take this little bunny. What? That's a little bunny. I, I, yeah, well, everybody kinda, who comes up to my desk. rough. Is this like a, this is like a, a level two? <laughs> uh, that's actually a level four. Uh, really? But it's a, it's a 2013 level four, which is mm. actually a 2018 level two. It's really... Great that you recognize that. Oh, I used I did some I did a little time over at Build a Bear. Mm. These are all from Build a Bear. I used to work there. Mm. I don't want to talk about it. Excuse me. This gentleman's bag has been confiscated by TSA with no explanation. Sorry, what are you his lawyer? No, we're we're just concerned citizens. We look, have you ever been to kindergarten? Well yeah. Yeah. Well then you should know why I'm acting this way. <sighs> Okay, I can see where you're going with that. I mean, Jesus. Uh, what? Uh, what? I heard hear? a scream. I heard a scream, too. I heard that scream. From ups, up above. From, from upstairs. upstairs. You were, <laughs> you, you were going to say from upstairs, but this airport doesn't have an upstairs. I know, because I've searched. Well, then how is it? You searched for it upstairs? Always. I've looked for stairs that go up. It's just kind of instinctive. I don't know why I do it. Marsha, this is the last time we're going to bust through onto the roof and rescue you. I, um, please, just help me down a little bit. I don't know how I got up here. There are zero stairs. You know, between you looking I'm, for an upper floor and humming your original music, <laughs> I sometimes wonder if you're committed to the job. Oh my gosh, those two things alone make me more committed than anyone. Marsha, is this because you used to work at the Winchester Mystery Airport? Maybe it is. Thank you for carrying me down. Easy, easy. I'm 
Hugh Hauser, and we're at the Winchester Mystery Airport. Look, there's a lady with a small dog. Why did, how, why did you, is there, could you have a plane flight that you're going to take with your, are you going to board the Hugh, dog? Hugh, Hugh, collect yourself. What is your question now? Dogs! Can they fly? Should they fly? Dogs are allowed to fly in approved carrying cases unless this is united, in which case, uh uh-oh. I pray that you sign our contract that allows us to put you on our show because you're a natural star. Look at these automatic doors. Open, close. I think the real feature of the Winchester Mystery Airport is all the stairways that lead to nowhere. Well, let's go. Come. Anyway, that was this a- gentleman's uh, bag has been taken. I know that it's a, it's a that's TSA, and I apologize for it. But sometimes they are allowed. Marsha, you said you could help. You told us to come to your desk. I know. I I, I feel awful. But do you want me to go talk to TSA? Sure. I, w- I would love that. But Mar- Marsha, can I have ask you one more question? It sounded uh, like you legitimately were into that idea, but you <laughs> said sort of like you don't. You said sure. I like was you- distracted because I shazammed the song that you were singing, <laughs> and it turns out, oh my god, that you are a legitimate musician. I did not know that. Well, thank you for recognizing that. Hey, hey, <laughs> Quick, shazam it. <laughs> oh. All my feelings in a box. That's the title of this one. Mm-hmm. Man, Marsha, you are you really have lived a life. I've uh yeah, I have a lived life and I you know, I'm <laughs> proud of I'm proud of some of my moments mm-hmm. and not as proud of other moments. Well, like what moments are you not proud of? Yeah, I'm dying to know. Are you dying to know? I'm dying to go to Orlando and I'm I'm slightly interested in what you are not proud I of. I used to work for the board of trustees for the Catholic Church. <laughs> and I, on a whim, invented both purgatory, limbo, heaven, and hell, all of it. All right, uh, how do we keep these people in line? I know, we're losing them right and left. They think they have free will. I don't, we can't have it. Yeah, I don't know these guys. Everyone wants to, I don't know. I feel like uh, everybody's got their own ideas about uh, how things should be, but I think we need to really scare them. Do we need a carrot or a stick? Well, stick. I think we got to put the literal fear of God into them. I believe that. Can you give me that? Hand me the cheese right there. Yeah, sure. Oh my God. Here you go. I've got an idea. Oh, (laughs) Oh, Marsha. We threaten them. I like it. Say more. We tell them either they do everything perfect, and in which case they do do things perfect. Right. They can go to a wh- land of white, the apple store in the sky. <laughs> and they can live with Jesus and all their past dead relatives and be happy forever and eat whatever they want, piles and piles of treats next to kings. But if they do something wrong, hmm, anything wrong, they will automatically go to limbo. Marsha, I like. La- Wait a minute. Yeah, it's not What's totally limbo? hell. Limbo will be like, we'll, it'll be sort of like a uh, a gauged hell where you can go to different levels of it. This way we don't, They if they do something wrong, say they m- masturbate on a cat. Oh boy. Say they do that. Straight to hell. Well, no, they oh. could go to limbo because then we, we give them uh, a chance to still for the rest of their lives, act as we want them to. Wait a minute, wait. So then what's the purgatory sir, for? Well, that's a great question. <laughs> How about this? Wait a minute. Purgatory. Maybe purgatory is that, it, and we'll do something yeah, different Yeah, it's got like limbo. purg in it. Like you're, you're getting purged of all your evils that oh, you did purged. on earth, and then you get to go to heaven. How about this? Limbo, we've been looking for a place to put these unbaptized babies because <sighs> they didn't do anything wrong, but 
They didn't get baptized in time. And they didn't do much right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. Welcome to the Limbo Baby Beauty Contest. We have some real beauties for you. Floating by in just a minute. It's gonna be Baby X. He was born and died pretty quickly afterwards. And get his get baptized. That's his problem. Hey, everybody. I'm Baby X. Uh, I think you'll agree. I'm pretty cute. Look at these cheeks. First question for Baby X. Yeah, shoot. Baby X, if you were to make one change to the United States government, what would that change be and why? And how would you implement it? And then what would be the repercussions personally and emotionally for yourself? Is that all from- one question? <laughs> hey, right. this is Limbo. Man. I feel like you're bending the rules a little bit, but okay. Obviously, uh, my change to the government would be mandatory prenatal care. Um, really got to check out how things are going before the baby gets born. Oh my gosh, that baby's really cute. Pretty smart, too. And pass the popcorn. Mm-hmm, there we go. <laughs> Question two for Baby X. Shoot. Now, this is a short one. Global warming affects us all. Mm. How would you, a baby, go about necessarily establishing new ice glaciers for um, some of the upper Arctic areas, but then also while then necessarily making sure that you're making it equal to the other areas where it's like when it's not hot, um, Mm. making sure that like the animals that need humidity and other kind of things, getting the right thing that they need, making sure that everything always goes to... Now, are those those guys asking questions? Do they work in limbo or are those... Those are those other babies? Unbaptized older kids. Oh, yeah, because I, I guess they're all babies. I thought there'd be more questions about limbo, I guess. And then to finish the question off, um, wh- who made that diaper? I'll take the second part first. Um, this is a, it's just a straight up Huggies. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's not much to say about that. It's got uh, adhesive tabs on the side to fasten it. Um, it's very absorbent. I'm a hardworking mother, and I love my children. So I want a diaper that does the job, but is also the number one diaper used in limbo for babies that have been unbaptized. Cut! Could you please just stick to the script and stop putting in this religious stuff? You know what? When I'm in heaven and you're all scrabbling all yeah. over each other, bloodied with yeah, swords, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I'm going to be like, cut, okay. cut, right. cut. Mr. Macaroon, Mr. Macaroon, we're losing light. we got to get this shot. Please, I beg you to call me Ted. Okay, Ted Macaroon, we gotta, we got to get this shot. I know. Well, it wasn't my idea to shoot this diaper commercial outdoors. <laughs> there it okay. is. Final question. <laughs> if you had to shoot a diaper commercial... Indoors or outdoors, use your time wisely. Oh my god, is that Carol Channing? Oh my god, is that Carol Channing out there? Yes, it is. Oh, this is an honor. (laughs) Every two years, I volunteer my time to host the Limbo Baby Beauty Contest, and I always finish with a rousing song from one of my favorite musicals. Oh, please sing it. Me, me oh, thank God TSA is here. Now, hey, what's up? this gentleman, does he look familiar to you? I yeah. think you took his bag. Give me your pants. What? Wait, hey. Hey. Everybody. Whoa. No, I will not give you my pants. We have, we are citizens and we have rights. You hey, see what hey, this here is? You go. Here you go. Thank you. What? I don't. Wait. Uh, what wait. are you doing? We didn't even get your name. Wait, no. Oh, wait. I'm Pat. This is Chuck. Hi. Oh. How are you going to get on a flight now? Oh, wait. Oh, so this is a this is bad. It's not good. Crap. Jesus Christ, give me. <laughs> oh my God. Marsha. Did you hear that? <sighs> that was Jesus. Come on. I heard it. It was from upstairs. It was Jesus Christ. I think so. And here's a special song because I love you all so much. Now hold on a second. One thing at a time. What is your name again, sir? I'm sorry. Ralph. Ralph. Pat's Chuck. Marsha. Yeah, Marsha, we know your name. Thank you. 
this gentleman not only not only does Ralph not have to give you his pants. I'm Edward, by the way. He did great. He didn't have to give you his bag. Uh huh. And you're not allowed to glue people's mouths shut. This is America. We've done some Googling while you've been abusing this gentleman. Yeah. And frankly, you're abusing your power. That's not possible. What do you think you are, a religion? <laughs> hey, Chuck, that was pretty. I mean, that's. <laughs> I'm testy. I was hoping to be in the lounge before our trip to Orlando. Uh, me too, Chuck. Hey, Marsha? Yes? Um, Earlier you made the announcement that pretty much nothing had changed, but <laughs> I'm looking at this flight board and my. My flight is gone. It's not even on the board anymore. Whoa. How can they take everything away from you? Ladies and outrageous. gentlemen, Delta has another announcement to make. You're not at the San Diego airport after all. What? Oh, this one's got my attention. This is this is purgatory. You're all in purgatory. Oh, wait a minute. There was one time I threw out a piece of trash, but I missed. It oh, bounced off the trash can onto the street, and I didn't I yeah. didn't go back and fix that. Well, a man slipped on that, and it caved in his arm. <laughs> caved it in, huh? Like mm-hmm. the air blew out of his arm. <laughs> well, well, I'm sorry. Do you remember what you did? I masturbated on a cat. Mm-hmm. Twice. You saw the second time? <laughs> Hold still. Splat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What, well, what did you, Ralph? Time. What did you do? I, I honestly, I. You didn't do anything. I don't. Wait a minute. You're, you're here by. You're mistake. not the Ralph who reviews church choirs, are you? Oh yeah. You're all over Yelp. You're yeah, s- I'm church choir Ralph. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're oh, you, scathing. You're vicious. Oh, I mean, if they're not putting in the work, they don't deserve a good review. Hey, I can't give you two pork pie hats. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, please rise for the choir. Huh. I will Wait, what are we singing? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh. Ralph, I do have a specific announcement for you. Follow those stairs that just appeared over there. They'll take you somewhere different. You've earned it. Okay. Uh, can I get those pants back, Edward? You won't need pants where you're going. Or the bag. Or your shirt. Can I have the shirt, too? Wait, Marcia, now you want his clothes? I have been Edward the whole time. What? (laughs) Yeah, that's me, too. I'm all... He morphed right before our eyes. Watch, I can turn into anything. (laughs) Hey, look at me. What? A different guy. A a nondescript guy in chinos and a button-down. No, no, it's me again. Do some more. Uh, okay. <laughs> Three pork pie hats. Uh, <gasps> hey. And now, I'm Ralph. <laughs> what? Oh my <laughs> God, this is... This is weird. Ralph, I if, mean, Jesus. If you... Go, ah! uh, close the stairs. Oh, shit. Oh, no, that's my fault. <laughs> Wait, why should he be punished? I mean, we're all punished as a community here. You know, I... What? <laughs> I have a very long sweater cape on. It's got a loud pattern, but I would happily give it to you, Ralph. You are next door to naked. <gasps> oh, what? Ralph's been transformed into a, a, what are you a cat? Do- Excuse me, Chuck. What the His hell voice. are you doing? He's got a cat voice. Put that away. I'm not doing anything. Splat. I'm not on purpose. Oh. Well, who brought that cat in here? What would a cat be doing in purgatory? Are we being tested? That's what purgatory is. It's a series of tests? It's just one big long test with a bunch of questions. Excuse me! Excuse me, I'm Hugh Hesser and I wanted to tour purgatory today. (laughs) And I noticed that you have about 200 animals on your desk. Mm -hmm. Uh, Will you tell me the history about each and every animal? Sure, I'll tell you about each and every one. Wow! Ralph, now's our chance. Wow. You can get on the stairs and go to heaven. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just follow me. That's my favorite puppy called Barnacle. Stop with a level four. Chuck, come on. Okay, here we go. And this one's my oh, I got my voice back. Oh, I got my voice back. We must be close then. Okay. Don't run. 
call attention to us. I'm tasting blood. I haven't exercised in 100 years. <laughs> Let's open this door. <gasps> wow, it's beautiful. It's all white. It's like this series of commercials for Max, starring John Hodgman and Justin Long. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a brief announcement to make. Welcome to heaven. If you have any questions about where you'll be staying tonight, please join me at my desk. I'm in the corner. I'll have an itinerary for you. Okay. Um, okay. If yeah. You had more. If you had plans, um, <laughs> and we're supposed to meet up with somebody, I might be able to help you meet up with them. A loved one. If we had tickets paid for Orlando. Well, I think we're past that now, Chuck. We seem to be dead. We're in the afterlife. The 415 flight to Orlando. I would like to speak to you I mean, do you need me to whisper it in your ear? You can whisper whisper what you usually whisper in my ear. (gasps) Guys, my bag. (gasps) Ralph! It's right here. (gasps) You've been reunited with your luggage. You're wearing pants, Ralph. Pants! All your clothes are back. What's what's wrong? My book's not in here. (laughs) And it all happened in a place called... Spontaneous Nation. Stephanie Corday! Ah! Where can people find you? What do you want to tell people about? Literally, physically, they can find me at the um, Crazy Uncle Joe show every Wednesday night, 8 p.m., That's Groundlings right. Theater. That's I right. hope you do it. I hope you do it. I hope you do it. Um, and uh, it's a really fun long-form improv show. Not so different from this, except Not you can so see different. Us. Yeah. Exactly. It's very fast. It's fun. It's fast. you got to be in shape for that show. Yeah, I have one ab. <laughs> and you brought it here today. Thank you. Yep, it's in my purse. Uh, and uh, online, you don't really, you don't really fuck with that. I don't have much of a presence <laughs> online. I feel like every once in a while you tweet and it's always alarming. Like, oh, it's so dumb. I just, yeah, it's so dumb. I don't. I up, up until you reminded me of what it was, I didn't know my Twitter handle. It was Stephanie dot tweet Twitter tweet. There we go. Follow Stephanie at Stephanie dot tweet Twitter tweet. <laughs> Ronnie Adrian, where can people find you? What do you want to tell people about? Uh, uh, Ronnie Adrian is my name. You can Google that. Uh, <laughs> I, I do shows at UCB Theater, so like a, a, a lot of that, or some, you know, some other time stuff. Just Google my name, you can find it. Um, White women every second Friday at UCB Sunset ten thirties. Um, I'm a hero night. Also, uh, uh, well, we already talked about social media last time I was here. <laughs> Uh, it's not really my strong suit. Like I said, I see some of y'all from the last time here. Y'all follow me on Twitter. Uh, some of y'all follow me on Twitter. Like I said, I hardly ever tweet. I'm hardly ever on it. But I'm trying to get that popping, I guess. Not really. I don't really tweet. Never mind. You don't find me on that one. Uh, Instagram is where it's at. If y'all find me on Instagram, Ronnie H- uh, Bones Adrian, actually. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, like I said, on Facebook. I mean, you can message. You can, you can friend me. If you, yeah, this is even worse than the last time. <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can friend me on Facebook if you want. But if I don't know you, I probably won't accept it. <laughs> So you probably don't do it. So only friends. Yeah, only, only friends. friends. Course, if I know you, only friends. And of course, Ronnie's mom, who's listening. Ryan, please. <laughs> we got we got the social media champs in here today. <laughs> but like, you very active on Instagram. You post pictures. A little bit, yeah. yeah. At Ryan Gall, uh, R-Y-G-A-U-L on Instagram, and Ryan F. Gall on Twitter. <laughs> working my side of the street. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Barely working. But watch the last OG tomorrow night and then watch it for nine more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, Evan Schletter. He is Evan Schletter on all the things. You can find him on EvanSchletter.com and check out Evan Schletter's non spontaneous Asian work because Evan Schletter is only the best. How do you spell Evan Schletter? It's simple, you dumbass. E B A N S C H L E T T E R. Thank you, Maestro. As for me, I don't know, guys. What can I tell you? Go to paulftompkins.com slash live. See if I'm going to be anywhere at all. <laughs> P.F. Tompkins, Twitter. So I got, I suddenly got extremely tired. <laughs> Thanks to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering the show all the way to the end, which this is. Goodbye forever until next week. This is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper and Presenting. 
guys. It's Jessica St. Clair and Lennon Parham here. If you haven't listened to Womp It Up, we've got all brand new episodes. They're airing weekly. Chances are there's about 20,000 episodes for you to listen to on your drive. We've got some of the best comedians in the biz on playing amazing characters. Casey Wilson. Rob Hubel. Paul Shear, Jason Manzukis, Mary Holland. Nick Kroll. Ryan Husky. How about Andy Daly? And that's just to name a few. Please join us every week for a new episode of Womp It Up and watch as the Womplerverse expands before your eyes. Hashtag turn around. Production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, Colin Anderson, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com.